So I was a child once. Yeah. Me. A child. Is that even possible? I know, right? But I was on vacation while I was a child, and I was just sitting there in my hotel just looking for something fun to watch on their TVs that they have. And you know what? Hotels back then, they didn't really have much of entertainment value. They didn't have any consoles. The only thing they had is like DVD players. That's pretty much it. So they had a few DVDs you could order, and one of them was Kangaroo Jack. It just went to DVD. So I watched the trailer, you know, just kind of curious. You know, maybe I want to watch it. And guess what? I was hooked. It was a trailer about an animated kangaroo who was going to get into some quirky shenanigans. And child me is like, this is going to be like a like an IRL live action Scooby-Doo situation. You know, it's going to be fun and quirky. But let me tell you, my disappointment was immeasurable. Not only did this movie mislead millions upon millions of people by posting an ad with a talking animated kangaroo, but there are only kangaroos in this movie on screen for five minutes. A 90 minute movie called Kangaroo Jack, only five minutes of kangaroos. I was so angry. There was just so much wrong with the advertising of this movie because obviously, you know, every trailer of this movie was a talking kangaroo dancing around doing quirky things. But no, this movie had nothing to do with kangaroos. It had to do with two dudes having to send over mafia money to Australia. So yeah, it was a little bit misleading and disappointing for child me. I hated the movie back then and boy, do I hate the movie now. This movie is so bad, the only reason it has positive Google reviews is because the only people who give it five stars are people who are just being ironic about how bad of a movie it is. Besides the impact Kangaroo Jack made by being the first movie to ever exist, not only is this content the best thing to ever happen to humans, but it also paved the path for other movies, more inferior and semi-obscure movies, such as Pulp Fiction and Avengers. Basically, every positive comment is just someone ironically trash talking the movie so everyone put on your cringe pants because it's gonna get wet it's gonna get it's gonna get sweaty because we're going to the outback australia shrimp on the bobby oh and just a little secret a little little, little thing about this movie you know the thug life song do 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 with the sunglasses coming down that is the entire theme of this movie every time the kangaroos on screen kangaroo jacks on screen they play that instrumental i hate it so much maybe it's just because it's been overplayed in my brain for years but boy it's awful so the movie starts out with a little bit of backstory the main character charlie's mom ends up remarrying a, a man salvatore and salvatore is just this big old mafia dude who everyone fears and then we get to meet his secondary character funny guy because he is black and fat no, I'm not joking. That's his entire character personality. They joke that he's black and they joke that he's fat. Really good comedy, let me tell you. Most important thing that happened that day was that I went out for a 20 yard pass. Unfortunately, there was only 15 yards worth of beach and I couldn't swim. Then don't go in the water? Did he ever think about that? Oh, he just, I forgot how to swim. There's a ball out in the water. Better just start, what? How stupid is this kid? Just leave the ball. Ask for someone else to go get it. Anyway, fat kid runs out in the water and then grabs Charlie and saves him. And then that's how the movie starts. That's basically all the context of the backstory that we need. So now present day, Charlie's dad sets him up at a hair salon. Uh, where, you know, he wants to be a hairdresser and that's just what he wants to do. But his dad takes 80% of the profits from him in his business. You know, good parenting. So anyway, present day, Lewis and Charlie are good friends. And then Lewis comes to Charlie because he has to deliver TVs in a truck. It, it didn't really make much sense. I need your help. If I don't get these TVs off the truck, man, I don't get paid. So what proceeds after this is just pure stupidity and chaos that makes absolutely zero sense and i hate it so much so funny fat guy starts dancing for absolutely no reason in the car and swerves in different lanes for absolutely no reason a lot of the stuff he does doesn't really make any sense in this movie so this is where things all go to shit all right so it turns out the truck with the tvs in it is a stolen vehicle and instead of pulling over he floors it but the thing that doesn't make any sense is he is surrounded by many vehicles 
Yet, in the context of the movie, he's flooring it. He shouldn't be able to go anywhere. It doesn't make any sense. Come on, boys. Watch out. Watch out. Here we go. So then this happens. So they're getting chased by cops. And then the cops roadblock them so they would stop. And uh, the worst case of plot armor I've ever seen in my life. A semi-truck carrying a buttload of fish just crashes for no reason. The, like, like the truck is just chilling like he's just going pretty slow. Hits a curb. The entire truck falls over. Fish just fall over the cops and they get away. Like... What, what, what's even the point? Like, what kind of plot armor is that? So then they find out that the warehouse they're going to is actually Charlie's stepdad, Sal's warehouse. What are you guys doing here? Your father didn't say you was coming. And they ended up bringing the cops to that location, which I don't understand why they didn't just drive inside. Like, they just parked outside. Like, there was a giant, giant garage door open. Just go in. Just go in. Like, you would have been safe. So then they run up the stairs and try to get away. And their way of getting away is screaming at the top of the, their lungs and jumping down a vent that they probably would have died from because the vent is actually a straight drop down. So they probably would have died. But, you know, it, it's got to fit within the movie. So they didn't die. <laughs> and the cops just lose them. Can the cops not hear? The two men screaming their heads off, jumping down a, a the big pipe. None of the cops noticed that. Okay. You know what? Okay, that's fine. That's cool. That's fair. All right. That's for you, Charlie. After the tragic death of your father. And when you had to go to beauty school, as boys who lose their fathers early in life often do. What? Wait, what? So when a boy's fathers die, he just goes to beauty school? Is that a normal thing? I've never heard of this. Do, do boys go to beauty school when their dads die? I, I, I didn't know. Learn something new every day, I guess. So anyway, Sal's, you know, a little bit angry with them and not happy with them, blah, blah, blah. And then, oh yeah, a fat guy makes funny comment for absolutely no reason. You said that he was a mouse, so that would be mouse blood, not chicken blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you little, little bitch she said something funny so this is where the main plot of the movie happens sal gives them an opportunity to redeem themselves by bringing fifty thousand dollars to a dude in australia and they're not supposed to know that it's fifty thousand dollars but you know they're not supposed to open the envelope but we go back to sal and then we find out that sal the only reason he's doing that is because he's expecting them to die like he, he's he's hoping that they'll just die when they go over there. Don't be so bad. No, why not? We're canceling their return trip. That's basically Sal's whole goal. Is he just doesn't want Charlie around anymore. So now they're on a plane and funny fat guy has candy in his pocket. Charlie grabs a jawbreaker. Then the jawbreaker's hot. Funny moments. And then we get another funny moment right after on the plane. So after Lewis finds out that there's money in the envelope, they go into the bathroom. And let me tell you, if... This is not the funniest part of the movie. Something doesn't smell right here. Look at it. I know, I'm looking. I've never seen so much green in one little brown package. Oh, it's like they're talking about poopy. That's, it's poopy. Poopy. Uh-oh. Stinky poop. <laughs> so they go driving around with Land Down Under playing and they drive in the desert. They're going to, you know, to hand over the money. But on the way, something happens. Since uh, there is a fat black man uh, who they really stereotype in this movie, they make him rap. Rolling in the land with the deep red sand, the big black man, the big black man. Oh. What happened? What'd they do? Oh my God. I killed a kangaroo. Oh God. They hit a kangaroo? Oh, no, no. Oh, hello there, pig. Uh, hey, PETA. 
Uh, why are you so calm? Kangaroo just got hit in a movie that I can't control. And normally you come running in, shouting at me, and shooting me. My hospital bills are through the roof. Well, you see, Mr. Pig, I realized that my really angry methods of dealing with people who hurt animals just wasn't working. So I've reformed. I'm here today to just do a quick PSA. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. G give a quick PSA. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Hello everyone. Don't run over kangaroos. Thank you. All right, that's all I needed to say. Thanks, Pete. Oh, um, Peta, just before you go, uh, they didn't just run over him. Oh, yeah. Uh, they also prop him up and uh, put sunglasses on him, and they start saying he looks like Jackie Legs. Great. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, <clears throat> let's do another one then. <laughs> Hello everyone, please don't put glasses on dead animals who you've just murdered. Thank you, that's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, uh, PETA, you know, I just want you to know that they didn't just do that. They also put a jacket on him and uh, put him up on the truck and were laughing while taking pictures of an animal they just killed on the side of the road. Oh, great. Um, uh, Peta? Are, are, you, are you okay? I'm just fine. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Please refrain from putting your clothes, your disgusting clothes, on a beautiful animal that you just murdered and proceed to take pictures of it. O okay, Peta. Calm down, okay? Remember, you reformed. You're not going to get angry anymore, record remember? record it and put it in a movie. I think it's okay. It's not okay. Peter, <laughs> Peter, put down the gun, okay? You're supposed to be reformed, right? To yeah, you're not that supposed said to be dead animal with your disgusting clothes on its body. You deserve death. Wait, wait, Peter, the kangaroo is alive. They didn't actually kill him. I'm sorry. I can't hold back any longer. I'm blaming all of this on you. No. Thank God. Fuck. Okay, so anyway, after that mess of extreme animal abuse and very distasteful comedy, yeah, the kangaroo runs away with the money in the jacket because um, the funny fat man forgot that, you know, he put the money in the jacket. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> the kangaroo got the money. Anyway, they try to chase down the kangaroo. Obviously, it doesn't work out. They crash their vehicle in the middle of the desert. Oh, stop, 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 stop! <laughs> so they do this weird thing because they really do try to make kangaroo jack a character but the way they're doing it is just stupid they don't give him useful screen time or screen time that makes any sense they just cut to the kangaroo every once in a while and he just does some quirky thing for like 10 seconds <laughs> see like haha -ha, ooh, kangaroo hood on head I do uh, ah, blah, <laughs> But then they walk to a town which is stuck in a old timey western movie for some weird reason because everyone's wearing a cowboy hat. There's saloon doors, like there's dirt roads. I don't know. Does this actually exist? Hey, uh, where's your phone? Around near the Denny's. You guys have a Denny's? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to watch this anymore. I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> And in this movie, they make everyone the most Australian person physically possible. No, the Danny, the bog chuff, the long drop, the thunderbox. You know what? Um, I'm just gonna look for it by the bathroom. From an American to someone who's Australian watching, do you say these words? The bog trough, the long box, and the thunderbox. Do, do you say any of that? And I, and I am blue. Right, Charlie. Nice to meet you, Chesa. Charlie. Hey, See, like this old man is so Australian, he can't pronounce Charlie correctly. What? Charlie. Charlie. 
First you steal my package, and now you're on the phone resume. We're gonna get it back? You'd be a banger short of a Barbie if you didn't. You'd be a banger short of a Barbie if you didn't? Like, come on, movie. I get it. You know, they're in Australia, but Jesus Christ, really? So anyway, obviously the dude they're delivering the money to is not happy with them, basically saying he's gonna kill them now because he, they didn't deliver the money in time. So now they're running from those guys while also trying to find the kangaroo with the money. So anyway, Lewis walks to the Outback Wildlife Foundation, which doesn't make sense to me because... What, what, how, how was he able to walk there? Like why also, why would it be placed next to the shanty town that's in the middle of nowhere? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Mind leaving a little for the camels? Oh, oh, it's the romance. The romance character is here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, there is a romance in this movie. The name's Lewis. Name's Jesse. Oh, nice to meet you. You work here? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is great. Look, see, I put my lucky jacket on the back of a dead kangaroo who came to life and then hopped off with all my money. Well, it seems to me you need an airplane. You need a tranquilizer gun. Yeah. He just needs an airplane. Then another quirky cut to Kangaroo Jack eating candy. So anyway, um, the girl just gives him a tranquilizer gun. Just like, here you go. It's yours now, guy I just met. What person would just hand a random person a, a tranquilizer gun with a dart in there? Who? Who does that? But not only does she trust a random dude with a tranquilizer gun, he's just supposed to snipe a kangaroo completely untrained. He's supposed to snipe a kangaroo in a moving airplane. So how funny Fat Man describes the girl he just met was rubbing his imaginary tits and his imaginary nipples. That's how, that, this is how he describes the girl he just met. And she is, ooh. <laughs> ooh, is this how guys talk to each other? Is this what bros do? Bro, I just saw this girl the other night and it was just, ooh. She, she was, ooh, ooh, oh. But anyway, Jesse the girl gives him a number to a dude who can fly them to get the kangaroo. But turns out the dude that they need was actually the dude in the bar that Charlie was drinking with, and that dude is flat out drunk, passed out drunk. Oh no, what are they going to do now? I sure hope the two pots of coffee and the Red Bull we gave him were enough. So they give him a Red Bull and he flies the plane just fine. So that whole plot point was just, Pointless and useless. Hey! Say hello to my little friend! Oh. So anyway, they do crash the plane, and it's not because the old man's drunk, but it's because, you know, since he's funny and fat, he accidentally shoots the old man with the tranquilizer dart instead, and then they crash and somehow survive. Damn it. So then the guy who's chasing after him goes to the bar that they were at and asks the girl where they went and then proceeds to do a creepy evil smile because you know that's what all bad guys do you know that you know those tiktoks the tiktoks of the of the dudes doing the joker smile that's what he's doing right now you're the guy so not only is the dude he was trying to give the money to chasing after him but now sal's goonies are also after them as well. So everyone's basically trying to kill them while they're just trying to get the money back. So they're walking in the middle of the desert trying to get back to town, basically, while all these people are trying to chase them down. Then they do a little bit of, you know, they're in a desert, so they gotta see mirages, and he sees a truck and does like a little funny moment. This part's not so bad. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. It's just the basic mirage generic joke, you know. And then comes the worst part of the movie, the forced stupid romance. Charlie sees, you know, the girl, Jesse, who was talking to Lewis earlier, but in Charlie's desert brain, he's thinking that it's a mirage. And so the first thing that he does is grab her tits. That's what he does. Walks up to her and just full on just grasps both tits. It's just so weird because like every time she's on screen, they like play some sexy, sensual music and then he just walks up and just grabs her tits. You know, cause sexual harassment's funny. It's quirky guys. Why aren't you laughing? So anyway, she knocks him out and then comes the part of the movie that everyone was expecting to happen. Is Kangaroo Jack actually talking? It's terrible. 
Like the animation's terrible. Uh, the, the, the puns are terrible. Love the jacket, Charlie. It's hard to get something that fits my shoulders. Nice. This is the part of the movie I was expecting to be throughout throughout the whole movie is him being a talking kangaroo, but it's just a mirage. It was all a dream. They they played us for fools. Clickbait, clickbait. So anyway, he wakes up and you know, she made a little camp and stuff like that. And um, then this joke happens. Drink this, it'll bring down the swelling. Unfortunately, it'll also make your testicles fall off. <laughs> So the bad guys find the old man, and honestly, the, dude, I feel so bad for this old man. He gets bullied throughout this whole film. And then, what is this? How do you feel about a morning start? She likes him? She's giving him those, those you, know, you know, those lovey eyes where she's like, What? You like me? He just walked up and grabbed your tits like a couple hours ago. And now you're just all lovey-dovey to him? Is, is that how to get women? Is this movie a tutorial on how to get women? I'm pretty sure if you grab a woman's tits, it's not going to end like this. So anyway, they strike a deal. He said that he'll give her $2,000 if she helps him out. And obviously it's a lie because they have to give all the money to the guys. And if you guys thought that uh, the fart poopy moments are gone... Oh boy, we're just getting started. These are noble beasts, my friend. Proud, majestic. Ah, <laughs> camel, camel go. I go fart. Yeah. Oh yeah, the fart scene. Yes, it's an entire scene. An entire scene of farts goes on for four minutes straight. Not joking. The camels consistently fart the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. That one was me. <laughs> he farted because he's fat. God damn it, dude. I was hoping for it. I was just waiting for the final punchline of the fat guy farting, and we got it. Can we round of applause? We did it. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. We got to the fart scene with the fat kid. We got it. We did it, guys. So what do you think? It's beautiful. The thing I don't understand about this, like, CGI thing, they're in Australia. Couldn't they just find good scenery? What was the point of making a CGI graphic waterfall thing, you know? Just find a good you know, look and location. How are we going to catch? You know what? I've been thinking about that. You ever thrown a bola? No. No way. Whoa! There's a montage! Oh my god! We did it! We, get, we, we got to the montage portion! Another round of applause! Oh my god, there's a montage! Oh. Yes! Yes! That's what this movie needed! Is more pointless scenes that don't require. It's stupid. It's stupid montage. Two thousands are so really cool. I'm very really cool. So it's so really cool. A montage is really cool. Two thousands are really cool. What? <laughs> what is this stupid stuff? Like these base reactions, just. Whoa, I threw it too far. Whoa, whoa, I dropped all these balls. I hate this so much. I'm so cool doing a montage. Yeah, man, I hit one tree. That means I'm a professional now, and I'm going to be able to land it right on that kangaroo because that's how it works in movies. Is this an Olympic event? Because I am Bolo Man. I am Bolo Man. I am Bolo Man. I... So apparently they have to hide themselves, get rid of their human scent, even though they were within throwing range. And their version of hiding their scent is just putting pain on their bodies. I, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be poop. I, I, I think, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do or something like that. But it, sh it just literally just looks like face paint. So once again, this part doesn't make any sense because they're about to catch, you know, Kangaroo Jack. 
and um, Lewis is having ants crawling up his leg, but he just stands there. He literally just lets it happen. He lets ants crawl all the way up his leg to the point that he screams and scares off Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Why didn't he just move? He's just standing there and taking it. It doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, then we get some more sexy romance action with the girl in the white tank top taking a bath. You can see the waterfall on her body. It's sexy, you know, for a kid's movie. I love it. So then Charlie jumps in the water with her and then they have the most awkward romance thing ever. We're like, you will you won't kiss me. You won't you won't kiss me. I won't even like it. You can kiss me and I won't even care. I won't even kiss you back. They like each other because he grabbed her tits one time. That that's basically their entire development at, at, at this point. You are so not even my type. You could kiss me right now and it wouldn't make the slightest Um I, I won't even like it. If you kiss me right now, I won't feel shit. <laughs> I didn't feel anything at all. <laughs> difference oh, i felt nothing Ugh. oh yeah and then you know fat funny man jumps in and ruins the moment <laughs> damn it lewis i was about to bang but now the bad guys finally caught up with them and they're in some trouble and that's when jesse finds out it's not four thousand dollars that they are looking for it's fifty thousand and they're involved with the mob and so she's like i can't believe i trusted you I can't believe you touched my tits a day ago and now we're in love. And, but I don't trust you anymore because I guess trust comes with grabbing tits. So they take the girl to go find the kangaroo and then they take Lewis and Charlie to go throw them off a cliff and, and kill them. But uh, for some reason, they forgot to check their bodies for like, you know, sharp things for them to cut themselves out of. They cut themselves out of the ropes and steal their gun and then they go back it then it's stupid it's dumb all right so charlie comes back with the gun and they do this whole thing where he's like you never shot a gun did you kid you never shot a man did you kid and then he cocks the gun and says he's a hairdresser and then i guess that means he'll shoot him so he what what is this movie? And then Sal's Goonies show up, and then we got a Goonie party going on. It's all the Goonies. And it looks like he's going to shoot, you know, the the the, the Australian guy. But turns out, he turns the gun to Charlie. It's all coming full circle. Best twist of any movie ever. Not, not really a twist. It's kind of just... I hate it. But then the two bad guys end up battling it out because they have a little hissy fit. And the dude's like, I, I, we have a contract. And it's my money. And he's like, no, you, no, no, it's not. No, uh, uh And then they do a nuh uh you, you. And then they fight pretty much. <laughs> and then Kangaroo Jack saves the day. He's going to come in. He's going to kick the guy's ass. He's going to save all of their lives. Oh. He just ran away. So then the chase is on. They're going after Jackie Legs, and the bad guys are coming after Charlie and the others. And for some reason, their truck can only go as fast as a camel can run. That just must be a really crappy truck. And then they get away, and it looks like Lewis is finally going to get the cash. He's so close. He's got it. And then he falls off of a cliff and dies. What a guy. Let me tell you, he, he sacrificed his life to get that 50K. Oh. No, he, he's fine. He's fine. Uh, yeah, Charlie saves him. Wait a second. It's all coming full circle. Because Lewis saved Charlie's life when he was a kid and kept holding it over his head. But now Charlie saved Lewis's life. They're even now. Okay, you know what? This movie's great. I changed my mind. This movie has the best plot I've ever seen. But then Frankie gets there. And is going to kill Charlie because, you know, Frankie just doesn't like Charlie. That, that's literally his only reason. He just wants to kill him really bad. But then he doesn't shoot him because the cops show up. That's right. And guess who the cop was? It was the black Australian man who was leading him there. It all comes together. 
it all makes sense now. This movie's pristine. But uh oh, it looks like Frankie's gonna get away. Just kidding, because Charlie was a part of the montage. And now Charlie's a professional because the montages give you a billion XP and you're, le you're level 99 at, at thing throwing. And he just nails them right on the legs. They live happily ever after. Boom! Boom! Dude, I'm telling you, there is not another movie that has gotten me more hyped than this one. You pansy ass retards are dead. Whoa! So anyway, Lewis starts getting worried since, you know, Charlie saved his life. Because Lewis thinks the only reason Charlie likes him is because he holds over the fact that he saved his life. But then, Lewis finds out he actually, they were friends all along. They were good buddies. And, but he had to mention, no homo. Hold on a second. We're having a very intimate non-gay moment. We're hugging and we're bros, but no homo. We're not gay, All right? Just, just wanted everyone in the audience to realize we're not gay. But then Kangaroo Jack ends up walking up to them and then giving them the jacket, basically. And then he shows that Kangaroo Jack has a family. And then Kangaroo Jack's son kicks Charlie. Like father, like son. Am I right, fellas? Well, there you have it. One of the greatest movies of all time, Kangaroo Jack. And I'm going to be honest with everyone here. It's terrible. But it's something about it, something about the fact that it's so goddamn terrible just makes it good in that way. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I get the, you know, it's so bad that it's good thing. I don't even feel like it fits in that category. It's funny to make fun of, you know? It's, it, it's, it's a fun movie to watch to make fun of it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We put it in the film history books, one of the greatest films of all time, Kangaroo Jack. And the funny part is, is that's a genuine thing. Like, people look at this movie as like a cult classic, like it's genuinely good. And the reason they do that is because it's so goddamn bad. There are so many times where I roll my eyes, where I cringe at so many things in this movie. So many things don't make sense. So many things are really unfunny and forced. And that there's not even a goddamn kangaroo for more than five minutes in this movie. But all in all, it's still a really bad movie. I would probably give it roughly a three out of ten. And that's the beauty of Kangaroo Jack. Oh yeah, and apparently this movie got a spin-off animated show or animated movie. I forget. But thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here, Please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to share with your friends. And also, for those who don't know, I have been streaming on Twitch lately at uh, twitch.tv slash bionicpigtv. If you guys want to go over there and watch sometimes, I could potentially be streaming right now. I don't know. But go on over there. Give it a follow. Follow my Twitter. Follow my Instagram. My socials are in the stupid description. I know no one opens them. But it's down there somewhere. But seriously, thank you everyone for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. And... Shrimp on the bobby. Shrimp on the bobby. Um. Um. Ka ka kangaroo. Outback. <laughs>